Okay, so let's see if you have the math skills to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Les has $5.77 in coins. He has three more quarters than pennies and two more pennies than dimes. The number of nickels is 1.5 times the number of pennies. How many of each type of coin does Les have? have. Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through all the steps we need to take to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so there is definitely a lot going on in this problem, but uh, really the bottom line is we have all this information and we're looking for the number of all these coins. So what coins are we talking about? Well, we have quarters, we have pennies, we have dimes, and we have nickels. So let's go ahead and see the actual answer. The correct answer is the following. So he has 12 pennies, 15 quarters, 18 nickels, and 10 dimes. Okay, now if you figure this out, wow, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A++. Matter of fact, I might give you like 200% multiple stars. A matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, take the rest of the year off. You certainly are an expert. I have no idea how you learn all this material. You might be watching that guy on YouTube, but whatever the case is, you did a great job. Now, if you are confused, uh, let's go ahead and get you unconfused because although there is a lot going on in this problem, it's nothing that we can't solve step by step. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. There is a lot of information. So anytime you're dealing with a math word problem, always use the rule of three. In other words, read the problem at least three times and make sure you understand the question. So we have a lot of information again here. And Les has $5.77 in coins. So there are no um, like dollar bills or $5 bills, anything kind of going on here. This prom pertains only to coins and of course we're talking about quarters pennies dimes and nickels and there's all these relationships amongst uh, these quarters pennies and dimes and nickels and the question is how many of each coin does uh, less have all right so what we need to do here before we can even model this problem is we want to review the um a value of coins in terms of, um, you know, in terms of a math word problem. So we are dealing here with a um, money math word problem, very typical classic type of problem. And I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem. But let's go ahead and just review some basics. Now, some of you out there may not be familiar with uh, U.S. currency. So we have coins and we have bills. So a bill would be like a dollar bill, okay? And then of course we have coins, uh, which we're talking about in this problem. And uh, in terms of coins in U.S. Uh, currency, uh, these are basically what we have. And they're all worth less than $1. So let's start off with a penny, okay? So one penny, uh, here is the notation for it. So that's one cent. Uh, a nickel, okay, is five cents. A dime is 10 cents and a quarter is 25 cents. Now, what is a cent uh, worth in terms of its value uh, when we want to think about it in a uh, mathematical problem? Well, let's go ahead and look at that right now. So the coin value here, a penny is going to be worth uh, 0 0.01, okay, one hundredth of a dollar, All right? So that this right here, this decimal, the place value is the same thing as a fraction, one over 100. So it takes 100 pennies to make up a dollar. Okay, so a nickel will have the value of 0 0.05, same concept as a penny. A dime is 0 0.10, and a quarter is 0.25. So these are going to be the uh, respective values of these various coins. 
So now that we understand that, let's get back to the problem and come up with some sort of strategy here. And we're going to have to um, obviously uh, assign a variable because we have unknown values here. So how many of each coin uh, does less have? Well, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, there are four unknown uh, uh, variables here, right? So in other words, we don't know how many quarters, pennies, uh, dimes and nickels. So would we want to establish like a variable X uh, for quarters, Y for pennies, uh, maybe Z and W for nickels? Uh, well, you could do that, but that is not the way we want to approach this problem because we have these various relationships here. So what I'm going to do is uh, establish a variable for one of these um, one of these coins okay and i am going to select pennies so what we're going to do here is i'm going to let x equal the number of pennies because if you think through or if you read through the prom carefully enough there are relationships and everything kind of relates back to you know one coin or another in other words um if you look at pennies we can uh, define how many quarters we have based upon pennies pennies are related to dimes and then the number of dimes is related to the number of pennies as well so pennies are common in this problem. So if we let X equal the number of pennies, okay, so this is what we're looking for. How many of each coin does he have? We're looking for the number of coins. So let's let X equal the number of pennies. And then what we're gonna have to do is build out the, relation, uh, the rest of the relationships here in terms of the number of other coins. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start. And this certainly requires some thought here. So if we have uh, X equals the number of pennies, let's go back and just take a look at how I uh, derived each one of these expressions for the number of quarters and nickels and dimes. All right, so if X is the number of pennies, X plus three is how many quarters he has. So how do, I, uh, how do we get that? Well, he has right here, he has three more quarters than pennies. So if he has X pennies, he has three more not three times, so that would be x plus three quarters. Okay, so hopefully uh, this makes sense. And we're just gonna be using the same concepts to define the number of nickels and dimes. So let's take a look at nickels. I have 1.5 x, and of course we can derive that right here. Uh, in the problem, the number of nickels is 1.5 times the number of pennies. Okay, so we'll write that down right here. So 1.5x equals the number of nickels. Now the number of dimes is going to be the expression x minus two. Now this could be a little bit confusing, but let's go back uh, to the problem and look at the dimes part of it. So he has two more pennies than dimes, two more pennies than dimes. So if he has eight dimes, okay, uh, he would have 10 pennies. So if this is pennies and the dimes are two, uh, less, right? Two more pennies, okay, than dimes. He has less dimes than pennies. How many? Well, he has pennies minus two, okay? So we have to kind of really kind of think through that. So here uh, is pennies minus two, but X, of course, is the number of pennies. So once you have these down and you're confident in these expressions, then basically you are ready to go. Now, a couple of quick things here. We're going to have to uh, find the uh, value of x, right? So we have this variable. The only way we're going to be able to do this is to construct an equation. Now, I want to uh, highlight something before we leave this here. Here we have sums and differences, x plus three, x minus two. Anytime you have things like this in algebra, if you don't have them explicitly written out, uh, you want to put them in. So in other words, I just wrote x plus three, x minus two, but in other words, you want to put parentheses, this is a group, and this is going to uh, help uh, prevent you making mistakes when we build an equation. All right, now what else do we know about this problem? Well, we know that the number, the number of pennies, okay, plus the number of quarters, now this is the value, okay, of pennies. In other words, if I have two pennies, what's the value? What's the coin value? Well, I have two cents, right? So we have to think about this, but this is the number, okay, of pennies times its va the value of a penny plus the number of quarters times the value of a quarter. In other words, if I had three quarters, I would have three times 0.25 or 75 cents. And then the number of dimes times the value of dimes uh, plus the number of nickels times uh, the value of a nickel. 
this total amount, okay, is $5.77. So right here is really our structure, our model for an equation. Now the number of each one of these respective things, I just went over exactly how to find it. These are the exact numbers of these, um, you know, various coins, pennies, quarters, dimes, and nickels, and the value, we understand that as well, because a penny is what? What is it in, uh, in terms of its value? That's 0.01, a quarter is 0.25, a dime is 0 0.10, and a nickel is 0 0.05. Okay, so hopefully you can see where I'm going here. We're going to build an equation off all this information now, so let's go ahead and take a look at it, and here it is. It's quite lengthy because we have all this information, but let me just go and walk you through it. So X, again, is the number of pennies, okay? So X times 0 0.01, this is the value of pennies, plus uh, 0.25 is the value of a quarter, and we have X plus three quarters, okay? Now, how many nickels do we have? Well, we have 1.5 X uh, nickels, but we have to find the value of that many nickels, so that's gonna be 0 0.05 times this, plus, uh, 0.1, this is the number of dimes, times x minus 2. Again, if you're confused about any of these expressions, you want to go back to how I set up the problem. Matter of fact, we'll go right back here, and this is what we're doing. Okay, we're using the number, okay, and we're going to be time multiplying it by the respective value of those uh, uh, particular coins, the, and the actual number of these coins. But we know that the total amount of Les's coins, right? His pennies, quarters, nickels, and dimes is $5.77. Okay, so this is what we have here. We have one lovely equation that involves decimals. So you definitely want to use your calculator. And really, this comes down to your ability to solve this equation. All right, so let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. I need your support to achieve my mission now, my mission is to reach as many people as possible that are interested in math or really want to learn math. Okay, now, if they're not getting this instruction that they need, and maybe they have a great teacher, and I'm sure there's a lot of great teachers out there, but here's the deal. If you're in a classroom, okay, and your teacher is only available to, you, let's say, one hour at a time, and you're like, hey, teacher, I have more questions. Well, you know, it's difficult to find support you know beyond that so what i like to do is share all my years of teaching experience and everything that i know i want to share it with the world for people who can benefit from this instruction okay the only way i could do that is to get people to support me and the best way to do that is to subscribe to my channel I basically look at that as gaining a new student and if you're going to do that make sure to hit that notification bell as well okay so let's get back to this problem so here's our equation and we're just going to have to go through this step by step. So we have 0.01x, and then we're going to use the distributive property here, 0.25. Now, remember, I said we want to use parentheses here, because if we didn't have parentheses around this expression, uh, a lot of students will get confused in terms of the algebra okay, involved. In other words, they'll forget to do the distributive property. And by the way, if you're saying, boy, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am rusty on all of this stuff, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. Uh, for those of you that might be taking like pre-algebra, algebra one, I have those courses. You can find links to those uh, in the description of this video. And that yeah, the level, uh, that level of algebra would be most appropriate for what we're doing here. Now, if some of you are like, boy, I don't even remember any of this from school, but you're thinking, you know, I'd like to kind of relearn this. You have to check out my math skills rebuilder course. I teach you a ton of basic arithmetic math to get you get you to have a strong foundation. And this is uh, designed, this course is designed for people who've been away from math for decades, right? Like, I totally forgot everything. Well, I will teach you everything and much, much more than probably you learned in school. So I started with basic math. I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some uh, basic trigonometry and probability and statistics. It is a self-paced course. And by the time you finish that course, you will know a lot of mathematics and that will definitely serve you well in various parts of life. Okay, so again, I only bring it up because as I get into uh, showing you what's going on here, if you're lost, just make a list on what skills you need to review. But let's go through this. So we have 0.25 times x, uh, and that 0.25 times this three, and I'm going to be writing the results of this down here because this is a pretty long equation, plus 0.05 times one, Okay, so the uh, 0.05 times, I'm sorry, 
0.05 times 1.5 will get us this 0.05x, right? So there's our variable, plus 0.1 times x, and then we have 0.1 times this negative 2. So here is the result of doing all these steps. Okay, so we're just going to have to be nice and neat and organized. If you are not neat and organized, you will definitely have a tough time in math. Now we have to recognize, well, we have some uh, like terms here, right? So x, 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 and x. We can combine all these like terms and make your life easier by using your calculator. So 0.01 uh, here, we're going to be adding the coefficients. 0.01 plus 0.25. Then we're going to add in a 0.075. Uh, uh, and then we'll add in this 0.1. And when we do all of that, we're going to end up with 0.435x uh, plus, now we have some numbers here, okay, 0.75, and we'll subtract away that um, uh, 0.2. Okay, so we're going to do all this on our calculator, and this distills down to this. So 0.35x plus 0.55 is equal to 5.77. So now we're going to go ahead and subtract uh, this 0.55 from both sides of the equation, and we're going to get uh, 5.22. So we got 0.435x is equal to 5.22. So the last step here is to divide both sides of the equation by 0.435, and when we do that, we get x is equal to 12. So, wow, that is a lot of work. Hopefully it makes sense, but now uh, we need to answer the question. So the question is, how many coins does less have? Well, we have to go back to our model. So x is equal to 12. We just solved for that in the equation. So what was x? Well, remember, x is the number of pennies. So he has 12 pennies. How many quarters does he have? He has uh, x plus 3 quarters. So that would be 12 plus 3, which, of course, is 15 quarters. How many nickels does he have? Well, it's going to be uh, 12, okay, x right here again is 12 times 1.5, and we do that, we get uh, 18, and then how many dimes? Well, it's going to be 12, which is x, minus 2, which of course is 10. Okay, so this is a classic type of money word problem, a very, very common type of problem in algebra, and I think these are just great uh, problems to do in terms of uh, word problems are interesting, but here's the deal. Once you know how to do uh, one type of these problems, you know, uh, one type of money uh, word problem. In other words, if you master a problem like this, and this one is a little bit more involved than other type of problems you'll encounter, if you understand, you know, the kind of uh, the foundations of solving a money math word problem, then you typically, you know, are going to be able to do other types as well. And that's the same thing in terms of algebra word problems with rate and ratio problems, motion problem, problems, mixture problems. The key is you need to have a wide variety of experience solving different types of problems because you're going to see these type of problems, I can assure you, if you are studying algebra. But uh, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.